Summers are short in the far north of Europe. The Baltic Sea is warm enough to swim in for just a few short weeks. Except here, in an inlet on the Swedish coast, where a nuclear power station returns its cooling water to the sea. The water's 10 degrees warmer than the sea beyond the outfall, providing pleasant swimming for four months of the year. There's no radiation in the water? No, <laughs> absolutely not. It's just the cooling water, so uh, it just passes through, through the system very rapidly. So it's nothing, uh, it's perfect, perfectly safe. With hydro and nuclear power providing 90% of its electricity, Sweden has one of the lowest per capita outputs of greenhouse gas in the developed world. With 80% of its electricity generated by burning coal, Australia has the second highest. As the evidence for global warming becomes undeniable, voices from both major parties are calling for a new debate on nuclear power. I think in Australia that we owe it to ourselves and more importantly to future generations of not only Australians but other people throughout the world to look at the nuclear option as one of the things that we need to consider for our future. On Four Corners tonight, is it time the country which supplies uranium to the world looks its fears about nuclear power in the face? Less than a month before his sudden retirement from politics, New South Wales Premier Bob Carr reopened a debate that's divided the Labour Party for more than 30 years. There is only one answer, and that is to leave the carbon economy behind us. That will take decades, but we must start now. In the climate of international terrorism, the issue of nuclear proliferation is even more acute than it has ever been. I don't think it's good for the country, I don't think it's good for our environment to go nuclear, and it's certainly not good for employment. Thank you, delegates. When do we want it? Peter Garrett, of course, is a veteran of the anti-nuclear movement, which has fought the uranium and nuclear industries for decades. Garrett is sticking to his guns, but some of his old colleagues in the movement, like former Greenpeace International head Paul Gilding, are changing their tune. I mean, as a person who thinks that climate change is the most important issue we face, I say thank you to the nuclear power industry and the uranium industry because they've brought the climate change debate into the mainstream. I don't think they are the prime solution in this area, but they will be part of the debate and they may be part of the solution, but most importantly, they put it onto the main stage and that is a very exciting development. To the right of the political spectrum, there are signs of a seismic shift too. The official position of the federal government is still that climate change or no climate change, Australia's future lies with coal and gas. Yet freshman West Australian MP Dennis Jensen claims that his call for a serious debate on nuclear power has been overwhelmingly supported by coalition MPs. When you say overwhelmingly supportive, are you saying that a majority of the members uh, of the coalition would support looking at nuclear power? Yes. Have you counted them? Uh, I've, cu I've counted the ones that I've actually spoken to, uh, to and uh, of about 40, more than 30, 30, 30 to 35 have been supportive. Now, the reality is throughout the world today... Twelve days ago at the National Press Club, Minister for Science Brendan Nelson went out of his way to back the call for a nuclear power debate. The government of which I am a member currently does not have a particular, have a position on this. Personally, I think we should, notwithstanding the hysteria that can be generated by this issue, because the reality is that our world is warming. It's a reality the Howard government has been very slow to face. Its own research paper warned 
that global warming will endanger the Great Barrier Reef and much of Australia's agricultural production. Yet officially, the government still doesn't accept unequivocally that the human production of greenhouse gases is the culprit. There is still a degree of uncertainty in the connection between global warming, which we accept that it appears as though the globe is warming, but only slightly, uh, and whether or not that is entirely or largely due to human activity. The jury's still out on that. Resources Minister Ian McFarlane is sitting firmly on the fence too on the question of Australian nuclear power. Well, I think the public debate is good and I think that it's up to the general public to decide whether they want to move down the nuclear power track. Uh, in terms of the here and now issue for us, it very much rests in the area of uranium and that's the area that I'm focusing on. There's been no equivocation by the government about uranium mining. It has shouldered aside the Northern Territory's Labour government to give the green light to more mines. In Canberra, Ian McFarlane chaired a strategy meeting attended by some of the most powerful players in the global uranium industry. That industry is lobbying hard. Its top priority is more uranium, but it's keen for nuclear power to be put on the agenda in Australia too. I think what's happened with global warming is it's given the nuclear industry an opportunity to, to sort of fly its flag again, uh, convince governments that if they're going to invest money uh, and make big political decisions about dealing with global warming, then, hey, the answer's already here, uh, sitting right in front of you. It's nuclear power all over again. It's been 35 years since Australia last seriously contemplated getting into the business of nuclear power. It was a different era. It's hard to believe now that anyone could have thought it a good idea to build a 500 megawatt nuclear reactor on the shores of Jervis Bay. It's not unknown for a pregnant female to give birth early and there's a very strong possibility that this is what's happening out here today. They will invariably come into a shallow sheltered bay away from the ocean swells to give birth. The bay is now a marine park, the jewel of the New South Wales south coast. But its southern shore is Commonwealth land, and at Murray's Beach near the tip of what's now Buddery National Park, an overgrown car park carved out of the hillside is all that remains of Sir Philip Baxter's dream. Mr Shire President, ladies and gentlemen, in 1970, the head of the Australian Atomic Energy Commission held public meetings in Nara to discuss his plans. And Four Corners, as ever, was there. The present position on this is that tenders have been called for such a station. This is a very complex operation. And we'll Behind any discussion of nuclear technology lies one thought. is that no matter which type of station Australia gets, it'll be capable of producing enough plutonium to make several bombs of this magnitude each year. Do you think Australia should produce nuclear weapons? At this point in time, no. Do you think Australia should have the ability to produce nuclear weapons? I think Australia should keep its options open. In fact, we now know that Sir Philip Baxter and Prime Minister John Gorton were determined to build a nuclear reactor here precisely to give Australia the option of making its own nuclear weapons. When Billy McMahon took over from John Gorton, he killed both the reactor project and the nuclear weapons option. At about the same time, on the other side of the world, a country not dissimilar from Australia also decided against nuclear weapons. But Sweden, without any coal or oil of its own, went ahead with nuclear power. And 35 years later, the public attitude to nuclear power in those two countries could scarcely be more different. No, you can have your nuclear, especially in areas like this. It was knocked back then, and I think it should be knocked back now. Why? Oh, well, I don't think we know enough about it, and uh, the accidents...